did you when you were first starting out did you have a, a period of iteration i know you said you started with like sending an email to your friends and family and colleagues but when you started realizing like oh the profile could actually be a lot bigger was there a, a what was that iteration period like for you yes so i actually didn't realize how thin my skin was for the, uh, for feedback mm. until i started writing every day because I had been writing for years before at Fortune, I started writing term sheet, which is a daily newsletter, and it goes out to really, really, really smart people. I had been writing, but a lot of uh, news organizations had shut their comment sections off, so I couldn't see that, um, and that used to be a horrible place. So the only feedback right. I would really get is if somebody felt strongly enough to email me or on Twitter. Uh, but I didn't really have a big enough Twitter to, for anybody to care. So, sure. it, so I never really got feedback except from my editor, I guess. So then when I started writing term sheet, it was every single day. And every single day, I would get really, really harsh feedback, especially in the beginning, because I had taken the newsletter over from two very talented writers. Nobody knew who the hell I was. Nobody cared. And right. so they were more than happy to give me their feedback. Sure. That In the beginning, I used to get so upset. And then I was like, you know, you don't have to attach feeling to everything sometimes. Mm. And if feedback is just feedback and sometimes like they do want they care about this newsletter so much they want it to get better so i started like taking it and implementing right. certain things that they suggested and it did get better sure. and i earned their trust so then with the profile i wasn't as nervous i, I still have gotten really harsh feedback but in a weird way like i appreciate it because i'm like oh yeah you care <laughs> um oh that's good i like that that's a better but, perspective Exactly. But but the, the other thing is that I think if you are right now listening to this, find something in your field that you can do every single day that opens you up to every single day of feedback or criticism. Mm, yeah, that's I mean, that's that's really tough, though, because especially I mean, for me, I, I, I would consider myself a recovering people pleaser. I really like people it's liking absolutely me. Absolutely same. <laughs> yeah, I really it's really hard for me to uh have people dislike me or to have conflict or things like that where I, I just really that's just part of my personality. I really like to be liked. <laughs> and and so the but but a huge part of the playing the internet game and creating content that actually you know connects with people in any real way it can't it can't be for everybody that's the thing and mm -hmm. then you also have to really start to build a little bit of a teflon exterior to you know criticism and feedback online and i think what you're suggesting is like the healthiest version of it where because i hear a lot of people who are just like yeah i, I just don't read my youtube comments anymore or mm -hmm. i just don't read the comments anymore or anything because it's so hard on me and i think like that's if that's what you need to do for your mental health or whatever, I totally get it. I'm sure at, at, at a certain scale, it's just totally useless to read that stuff and just mm -hmm. is probably damaging. But I also think like there's probably some signal too in that noise. And like to what you said, like somebody cares this much to write this mean of a comment. There's some signal there to like really take take notice of and be like, cool, what is what's missing here that I can improve on? Right. Kat Cole, who's one of the best, I think, operational leaders I know. Um, she used to be at Focus Brands. She, I heard her on a podcast once say when she was, she was really young when she was in these leadership roles and she was managing a lot of people who had worked there for decades. <laughs> and so she was like, how do I earn their trust? Let me ask for feedback. Let me ask for criticism, et cetera. But she said that the one thing she told herself is when somebody gives me really harsh feedback before I dismiss it, because some of it you do have to dismiss because it's just not helpful. But before I dismiss it, I will first consider like accept it as true. Like she would ask herself, what if this was true? How would I act? How would that change my actions? And mm. so before you dismiss something, accept that it's a fact and think about like, okay, so if this is a fact, like, what can I do to make it better? Because I think that that's the definition of constructive feedback. If somebody's just like, I hate your hair, like, what am I going to do with that? I mean, I could change my hair, sure. but I'm not going to do it for one person. Um, right. Yeah, I think there's a danger in like becoming like kind of like getting whiplash from like taking mm. everybody's feedback. But if you hear something more than once, 
you might want to explore that a little bit more. Um, but I do think that right now we do live in a society of a lot of people pleasers and a lot of people who it's like, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I love for people to like me. The way that I separate that out is like, I'm like, this is my professional life. And like, I do this, you know, for a living people pay me. And then there's my personal life that pe a lot of people actually don't know a lot about because I don't put that right. out there for it to be criticized.